This is the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth quarter, 2021. Lesson 8 from our series Present Truth in Deuteronomy is titled Choose Life, ready for teaching on November 20, and I'm Percy Harold. Thursday, November 18. A question of worship. Central to the covenant relationship between the Lord and Israel was worship. What made the Israelites different from all the world around them was that they alone as a nation were worshipping the true God as opposed to the false gods and goddesses of the pagan world, which were really no gods at all. As we read in Deuteronomy 32 verse 39, Now see that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. Read Deuteronomy 4.19, 8.19, 11.16 and 30.17. What is the common warning in all of these verses? Why is this warning so essential to the nation of Israel? Deuteronomy 4.19 And take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the host of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. And Deuteronomy 8.19 Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. And Deuteronomy 11.16 Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And Deuteronomy 30.17 But If your heart turns away so that you do not hear, and are drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them. Thousands of years ago, just as today, God's people existed in a culture and environment that in most cases exuded standards and traditions and concepts that conflicted with their faith. Hence, God's people must always be on guard lest the ways of the world, its idols and its gods, become the objects of their worship. Our God is a jealous God, as we read in Deuteronomy 4.24, Deuteronomy 5.9 and Deuteronomy 6.15, and He alone, as our Creator and Redeemer, is worthy of our worship. Here, too, there is no middle ground. We either worship the Lord who brings life, goodness and blessings, or we worship any other God which brings evil, curses and death. So Deuteronomy 4.24 reads, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. And Deuteronomy 5.9 reads, You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. And Deuteronomy 6.15, For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. Read Revelation 13, 1-15 and focus on the question of how worship is being presented here. Then, contrast those verses with Revelation 14, 6-12. What is happening here in Revelation that reflects the warning given in Deuteronomy, and all through Scripture actually, about false worship? Revelation 13, beginning at verse 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marvelled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon, who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for forty-two months. 
Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast, to be killed. And we're going to compare that with Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. However different the context, the issue is the same. Will people worship the true God and have life? Or will they succumb to the pressures, either overt or subtle or both, to turn their allegiance away from him and face death? Ultimately, the answer lies within each individual heart. God did not force ancient Israel to follow him, and he won't force us. As we see in Revelation 13, force is what the beast and his image will employ. God, in contrast, works by love. And so to finish the day, how can we make sure that, even subtly, we are not slowly leaving our allegiance to Jesus for some other God? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.